A few weeks ago, I had two options. I wanted to add more light to my room, which for me meant I could either A, just buy a lamp, or B, spend weeks trying to build custom lights despite having no tools. Now, for a while, I didn't know which one I was going to pick. But then I remembered. I'm an engineer, which means I knew exactly which one I should do. Show you how to make your own. Hi, welcome to the third build, the place where I try to build cool things and sometimes teach you how to make them too. Let's jump right into what you just saw, the light panel project. This is what I decided to make to fix my lighting problem because it has far more functionality than any regular way of lighting up a room. That's because the Arduino controlled LEDs within it allow it to act as a soft light so they can turn on and animate in any brightness, color, or pattern that I could want. And when I thought of the idea to build this, I wanted to get started right away. There was a tiny problem though. You see, if I had made this six, no, seven, wait, wait, nine? It's been nine months? Holy cow. Anyway, if I had made this nine months ago, I would have had access to all the tools I could have wanted and probably finish this in like a week or two. But now being basically stuck at home, I had to find a way to do it without any additional tools. And without high quality tools, that also meant I couldn't use high quality materials. But I wasn't gonna let that get in my way. So let's talk about those materials. This project required addressable LED strips so I could create whatever color I want, an Arduino and breadboard so I could program it, a power supply to power things, some wires to connect things, a pillow sheet to put in front of each panel, and a whole lot of cardboard to support everything. Of all those materials, the only ones I didn't just have lying around were the LEDs and the power supply. I mean, of course, the ones I didn't have are the most important and also the most expensive, but they didn't have to be. And I'll get to that. The good news is that with such a small list of materials, if you want, you can use this video as a guide to make your own. Although, before you decide to, hear this. This might look like a fancy arts and crafts project where you have to wire a few things, but don't get it twisted. This is a computer science project. You might be thinking, all right, how much programming does it actually take to program a couple of lights? And it's not much, it's not much, I'll give you that, it's not much. But, putting the lights together is only the beginning. Because if I could find the time to make more videos, I'm going to show y'all how I got it so I can control these lights from any device or make it so that they light up the room to match the color of what's on my TV and just so many other more things. So if you just want some lights to turn on, follow this video, see what it says, and you're done. But, if you want to make something really cool, I hope you like programming. Let's get into how I built it. So the first thing I needed to do was figure out how big I wanted the whole thing to be because I needed to figure out how much material I was going to need from my cardboard. So I wanted to go with six equilateral triangles that I was then just going to put into a hexagon. And the reason for that is putting together triangles was the easiest shape for me to do. Each triangle is made up of three one and a half foot sides, which then makes the hexagon as a whole about three feet by three feet. With that decided, I started cutting out cardboard from an old Amazon box I had lying around with a box cutter. I went with cardboard because it was sturdy enough to support the other really light materials I was using. And also I could cut into it easily to create whatever shape I want. I made each side a little bit wider than I needed to because the original plan was to hide the power supply underneath one of the panels. But then once I had everything mostly done, I tested it out, saw that it looked kind of weird, so I had to scrap that idea. They also weren't perfectly the same width, but I found a way to hide that later. With all three sides of the six panels cut out, it was now time for me to figure out how I was going to put them all together. Luckily, because I chose a triangle, where all three sides support each other and a material that was super light, 
All it took was a little bit of tape on each of the corners for the panel to hold its shape. A few minutes of taping later and the frame from each panel was complete. Now it was time to put the covers on it so that way the light coming out of them could fade together easier and that starts with cutting up some pillow sheets. For the size of the panel I was going for, I ended up needing two pillowcases to get enough material. One important thing I had to consider was that for each panel, I had to cut out a slightly bigger area than the panel itself. That way I can use that material to then wrap around the sides and cover the cardboard that I just made. Again, with these, I wasn't concerned about making the cuts perfect. I just wanted to make sure that they were slightly bigger because by now I had a plan of how I was gonna hide those imperfections. Once I had the pillowcases cut out, I used hot glue to attach them to the cardboard. Now, this was hands down the hardest part of the project because what I wanted to do was stretch the pillowcases edges so that way they were underneath the cardboard so that way the glue and the edges themselves were hidden. But the problem was I didn't leave enough material on the edges of the cardboard to really do this properly. So there wasn't enough material for me to actually glue onto. This is also the part of the process I wanted to film myself doing the most because it's probably the place where you can mess up the worst on. And I had to do this whole complicated thing with tweezers and careful timing just to barely get it right. But I'm just one guy, like I was having a hard enough time not hot gluing my fingers together. So controlling a camera at the same time, yeah, that, that ain't happening. With the pillowcases attached, you can now see my plan for hiding the edges in action. And that's because from the front, you can't see the jagged edges of either the cardboard or the pillow sheets. This part actually worked out much better than I was expecting, which just kind of went to show that even if I had imperfections, it didn't really matter as long as I found a way to hide them. Wait, what? The last thing I needed to do with the panels is add their lights. Now buying the lights is probably one of the trickier parts because I had to make sure I got the right amount and kind of what I was looking for. To figure out how much I needed to cover the inside of each panel completely in lights, I had to do a little bit of math where I took the length of each panel, which is one and a half feet, multiply that by three for each side, which is four and a half feet, and then multiply that by six for each panel, which is four and a half times six, which, four and a half times six, what is that? Uh, okay, if you ever need a proof that you don't need to be good at mental math to be a good engineer. Anyway, let's figure out a different way to do this. Uh, okay, so I had 18 panels of one and a half feet, which is 18 times one and a half, 27. Yes, okay, good. 27 feet, that's what I needed. Next up was finding the kind of lights that I want. And for addressable LEDs, there's actually a ton of options. I ended up going with strips that had 30 LEDs per meter, since it was a sweet spot between price, brightness, and power consumption, and found them for about $5 per meter, so $35 in total. This was a little bit more than what I wanted to spend and was the first time that I realized that I probably should have made each panel smaller, but that's what I get for not planning ahead of time. There were also some calculations that needed to get done in order to choose the right power supply. And that basically came down to making sure that it supplied the right amount of voltage, which was the same as what my lights took, which is five volts and supplied it at enough power so that way all the lights can turn on. I knew that the lights that I had chosen used at most 18 watts per meter. And since I had about nine meters of lights, that meant that my power supply needed to use, okay, hold on. Not making that mistake again, 18 times nine equals 162 watts. So that 18 watts per meter is the absolute maximum, which is when all the LEDs on the strip are completely white at full brightness. And knowing that these lights can get really bright on their own and I really wasn't gonna do all that, I decided to skip a little bit and just get an 150 watt power supply instead. Now this was the second time I wish I'd gone with one foot long side panels. And that's because the lights that I got had wires already attached to them every meter. So that means that they were already set up perfectly to be in the three foot segments I would have needed them to be to cover each one of the triangles one foot sides. So instead, that meant I had to remove all those wires connect them somewhere else and make sure that they were all long enough so that way they could connect to the power supply and the Arduino controlling them. So speaking about Arduinos. All right, let me show you guys something. So this right here, 
This is the board that I originally used. It's called the Adafruit ESP32. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully. If you're going to do this project, do not use this board. Don't do it. You will save yourself a million headaches. All right, let me explain why. There are two big reasons. The first one is, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, those lights, they require five volts of power. Now, the data signal is a little bit different, but it's highly recommended that you use an Arduino that also supplies its data signals at five volts. This one, like unfortunately most Arduinos, use 3.3 volts, which means it can get really hard for the signals that you want to send to the lights to actually reach the lights that you're going for. And that was a special problem for me because the light settings I was using, they were over a meter long, and after that distance, things could get a little wonky. Now, that problem I knew was gonna happen from the get-go. I knew that that was gonna be a thing, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna deal with it because I wanted to use this board anyway since I just had it. However, the second issue is what really drove me nuts. Because when I started programming out the lights, I started noticing that things are a little bit off. Like I would change the color of some lights, but then some other lights started flickering. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. That might be a source of the first issue. So I changed it up a bit. So that way I was powering the lights off of the Arduino itself. That way it was getting the power at 3.3 volts and the data at 3.3 volts. However, that did not fix the issue. So then I figured, okay, it's probably my programming then, because I will admit the way I ended up programming this was kind of unconventional. So I'm like, okay, let me revert back to something a little bit simpler, see if the issue persists. It did. And at that point, I was just scratching my head thinking, what could possibly go wrong? And then about a week into trying to figure out this problem, and on the verge of thinking that this project just wasn't possible since it seems like Arduino just aren't capable of changing the lights as fast as I want, I come across this GitHub thread where people are talking about them having the same issue with the same board. And as I look through it, it turns out that it's an issue with the board itself. Now, the reason why this board is special and why I wanted to use it was because of the ESP32 module, which allows it to connect to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Now, as I said it earlier, I wanted those features for the later connectivity thing, but because of something with this module, this board does not properly send out signals to addressable LEDs. So basically what I discovered is that it's literally just this board that caused me this issue. Now it is worth saying, but this is a known issue by the board manufacturer and they're trying to fix it right now. I mean, I even saw the head of Adafruit herself trying to fix it, but, um, until it's fixed, use something else. All right, I'm sorry, rant over. I just have to get that off my chest because it's those really dumb problems where the solution is both really simple and also doesn't make any sense that just really get to me. Luckily, I was able to grab a board from a past project using an Adafruit M4 and hooking up the lights to that, they worked perfectly. And with the panels assembled and the lights working, I was finally able to start hanging them up on the wall. I only put up five to start with because I wanted to make sure that I could get to the rest of the wires in case I needed to redo anything later. The only step I left to do now was the programming, but as I said before, I'll try to make a whole separate video on that because just getting the lights to animate like you saw before is a topic into itself. In the meantime, I left a link to the code in the description if you wanna take a look at it with instructions on how to use it yourself. Now you might find the way I program some things to be a little odd, but I promise there's a method to the madness and I'll try to explain it later. To clean up the final look, I use some of the remaining cardboard and fabric to create a shroud to cover the power supply and hide the wires traveling along the wall. And with a few hours of testing and debugging later, the project was complete. I'm really happy with how it turned out because honestly, there were several times that I thought it would just end up looking like a mess at the end. I think part of that stemmed from me getting so used to having real tools when trying to build things that I forgot that you really don't need much to make something cool. And 
like any good project, there's still a ton more I want to add, and just as much as I want to show you. But until then, I'll see you later.